Madam Chair and fellow commissioners, thank you for receiving the staff report and update on the Oxnard City Car programming. This presentation is in response to the question asking what City Corps has been doing since the start of the pandemic, and we have been quite busy. This is Olympia Hugo, Recreation Supervisor, delivering this update. I will be present at the January 26th Parks and Recreation and Community Services um, Commission meeting along with um, pertinent staff. We will be available that evening to receive questions. Okay, so um, a couple of um, items to note, a brief trip down memory lane for those of you who may not recall um, or have context for Oxnard City Corps. Um, it was founded in 1995 with a handful of youth who wanted to do something meaningful and the community services manager um, who empowered and enabled them to do just that. Um, City Corps alumni work now throughout the city of Oxnard, um, local municipalities, and really across the country, continuing to do meaningful work wherever they plant themselves. Um, the mission of City Corps is to prepare youth and young adults in our community to engage in job training while serving the community. And so our mission statement um, State City Corps offers diverse opportunities for networking for future careers through established relationships and partnerships with other city programs, departments, community organizations, and also the private sector. Um, using the community as a classroom, um, students are enabled to are enabled in learning how to function in different cultural systems and potential work environments. And so, really focusing in on um, learning through works and service. Um, via community service, career exploration, and job training. Um, so working alongside our permanent staff in various projects and program assignments that we have and partnering um, as the mission statement um, describes um, throughout the city um, in various departments and divisions and then also throughout the community um, with other agencies and businesses. And so um, with the Recreation Community Services Division, um, City Corps is one part of the Recreation Division um, within the Cultural and Community Services Department. Part of our programming takes the skills and trades that we teach our staff and youth and really put them um, to use within recreation events, facility maintenance, and then countless other areas across the city. Going back to the beginning of the pandemic in March 2020, um, when the state of California entered the COVID-19 public health emergency, um, some of our city core programs and services paused. Some transitioned, some were created um, to fulfill new needs. Um, this was the case across the recreation division. Um, recreation as a whole, including much support from within our city core staff, um, implemented new approaches to establish programs along with creating new ways to safely engage our residents. The following are programs and services performed by recreation that involve City Corps staff support um, during our program closures. So these are um, this first part of the list are really covering March 2020 through December of 2021. Um, in, within our recreation, our division response, um, and our the items we were involved in. And so going through and visiting um, various parks, um, and so City Corps staff, along with staff across our recreation division, visited 53 City of Oxnard parks daily for eight months. Um, so visiting and um, repairing or updating um, signs that were there. Um, we also used um, the app that our public works team has to be able to log all of that information and um, things that staff saw. Um, part of it was education of residents and then also um, enforcement of um, some rules um, and different guidelines that were constantly changing um, throughout the early part of the pandemic. City Corps staff also supported um, the homeless shelter. And so Pal Jim um, was under temporary use by Mercy House um, as an extension of their homeless shelter. 
And so City Corps staff um, daily um, was assigned and supporting restroom servicing and sanitation of common surfaces and areas. So literally walls, door handles, any countertops, um, helping to sanitize and keep um, common spaces clean. Um, business outreach. And then so we supported um, different departments in the city in outreach and communication to Oxnard business owners. So um, phone calls, flyering, and actually visiting um, to share about information, um, applications that people could have applied to, um, different resources that were available, and helping ensure that every business owner knew about it if they hadn't applied already. And also farm worker assistance outreach. Um, so setting up, um, City Corps was supporting um, setup and management of those different outreach events. Some of them were food distributions. Um, a lot of our staff um, within City Corps and throughout recreation supporting and registering farm workers for um, some of it was grant funding, different applications that were um, available to the broad community and wanting to make sure in our partnerships um, with local agencies that our residents were taking advantage of those. And so physically helping them sign up like on a tablet or on a phone um, while they were in line for these different resources. Food share. Um, so along with food distributions, um, a large part of um, the efforts out at College Park, and so those are recently transitioning, but um, from the end of March 2020, um, really City Corps had set up um, a lot of the logistical traffic plan um, and the hard set um, layout um, for distributions, um, largely at College Park. And so, so many families um, that came through um, those different um, distributions, receiving boxes of food for the week. Um, other distributions and food distribution sites included the United Farm Workers Foundation, different pop-ups um, that we assisted with, and then also um, traffic support for Ventura County Community Action. There are also a number of events um, between March of 2020 and December 21 that um, recreation we transitioned um, into virtual or a drive-through option for our community and so that was also um, managed in part with our city core staff so drive through for halloween turkey giveaways transitioning um, and creating the shoebox parade um, which we did throughout the city um, enlisting our co-workers in creating a shoebox and then parading it through and helping to record and prepare that production um, for our community the Tamale Festival to go model. Um, all of these different events were, were also supported by City Corps staff. Our vaccine sites. Um, so, recreation hosted um, vaccine site support, um, specifically at the PAL Southwinds um, Youth Center. Um, we hosted and staffed um, a vaccine site in partnership with Bonds. And so with their pharmacy. Um, so we have staff there um, supporting not just um, the lines, but actually registering, um, monitoring um, people as they um, completed um, their vaccine to be able to um, rest and wait the amount of time there. Um, and so partnering in that and then supporting um, largely the traffic and the um, pedestrian and vehicle traffic coming in and out of the Rose, C Street, and College Park on vaccine sites. And for the three testing sites that are on there, at Wilson Park, Colonia Gym, and Durley Park, um, we hosted COVID-19 testing sites. And so we actually did that with staff. We had staff scheduled at the sites. Um, we did that through a partnership with Color and um, Ventura County um, Public Health being able to offer testing sites within our communities at our facilities that were then closed. And so recreation along with um, our staff within City Corps were there as well. Um, some new events that we um, offered um, 
rock events and so staff from across our, our programs and um, a number of youth um, being able to paint rocks and our staff going out and placing them out um, the night before um, select holidays. So um, right before Easter, some rocks went out, right before Valentine's Day, um, having those um, not virtual, but um, events that residents can go and participate in um, without staff needing to be present and to, to limit um, interaction. Um, Food Gone World, really a play off of our Tamale Festival to Go um, program, uh, but working with food vendors, restaurants, um, established um, food vendors in our community and then really highlighting them and bringing in the community to go and um, purchase meals from them at a discounted rate and to try different foods. Um, that was another one of the efforts. Um, a, another one that was really birthed during the pandemic, um, our mural program with cultural arts um, and a large support <clears throat> coming from City Corps and helping to prepare spaces um, for those murals and those um, large events. Um, mini murals, um, one of the best examples I can point out to you, not just our large murals, but the mini murals throughout the parking structure there in downtown. Um, that um, was a mini mural project that um, happened across multiple weekends with quite a bit of staff support. Virtual programs. Um, so within our after school programs, and we also saw it within um, our special populations program, to focus in for um, Wainini ACES. Wainini ACES is a program um, within City Corps um, supporting the Wainini School District. Um, trend, that transition into virtual programming for 2020 through 2021. Um, and so preparing activities for parents to be able to pick up for their youth and then also um, working with the students virtually. And one of the, the highlights during that period was a virtual 5K um, that the Wayne and staff had put together for their participants, which was very successful and had a lot of great participation. Um, some fun videos and pictures that came through um, from our participants too were, were definitely a highlight um, during that almost two year period. Okay, so I, we just talked about the um, different programs and, and projects that City Corps staff was involved in um, within division-wide efforts. Um, moving forward um, for the rest of the presentation, focusing in on City Corps specific programming. So programming that continued um, from 2020 through 2021, and then also an update on what we we're working on um, in this last year um, in 2022. And so um, just to note that um, for the programs that I'm about to share about that have an asterisk on the 2020 start date, um, most of those are ones that had actually started before 2020. Um, but since I'm wanting to focus in on answering what has City Corps been doing since the beginning of the pandemic, um, noting the 2020 start date, that yes, at the start of the pandemic, we were doing it, and then being able to talk about what we'd continue to do with it um, while we were in closures and, and what that has looked like. Okay, so we continued with um, the CAL FIRE grant in partnership with Public Works. So 2020 through 2021, um, supporting the planting and maintenance of 500 trees through different parks and medians across the city um, and various parkways. And animal safety, um, supporting um, the police department and weekly staff support um, of animal safety. So actually um, providing a staff member to be able to drive and take on a shift within animal safety. And so that ended September of 2021. Um, CalVit grant, um, that's another um, grant that we um, supported PD with, um, and so that one also wrapped up um, during that period. Um, at Ormond Beach, 2020 into 2021, the installation of almost 11,000 feet of fencing um, to protect um, specific species of animal within that area. So actually taking out teams and, and working on that. And so that was also grant funded 
and that's one that has um, come back periodically. And so we we completed that project during that time. Um, catch basin maintenance um, over 3,000 citywide. Um, City Core had been doing that project for a number of years, and we continued that through March 30th of 2022. So throughout the the time um, of earlier in the pandemic, and then um, we we stopped that internal contract um, on March 30th of this last year at Oxford Beach Park. We built a 10,000 foot um, square foot drought tolerant landscape. So you can see the photo there of staff um, out there working um, on the project and you can now enjoy it today. Um, town keepers, um, within our town keepers um, program, there are a number of different um, projects that we work on. And those that are most visible are really our alley cleanups. Um, from 2020, uh, March 2020 through the end of 2021, there were just over 60 alleyway cleanups. And part of that was a transition of staffing, which I'll talk about at the very end of the presentation, um, really limited staffing. Um, but we are grateful and, um, to be able to complete the ones that we did. And in this last year, 2022, with some restoration and staffing, um, we were able to complete just over 50 um, alleyways. Um, with the trash can maintenance, um, so there are various um, trash cans in downtown that um, City Corps has um, supported the, the servicing of. And so we continued through with that regularly um, throughout the pandemic and even throughout this, this last year. So two to three times per week, depending on, on the trash can. Um, and that also includes our bus stop bench maintenance. Um, so not just serving seeing the trash can at those bus stops, but also the maintenance of that area immediately in front of and around the, those bus stop benches. And you can see in the bottom photo um, a picture of power washing and staff working on really cleaning up those areas. And so that that continued and has not stopped. And going into um, other partnerships that we, we took on and have continued. And so for Parks Division, um, in July of 2021, um, we took on um, servicing 534 trash cans throughout General Fund Parks. Um, so parks in the city and supporting Parks Division staff in servicing those trash cans, going in and changing out the trash bags, replacing with a new trash liner, and then also servicing um, loose litter within a five foot radius of the trash can. Um, we were able to, to support that, and that just ended at the end of June. For special districts, supporting River Park and Seabridge with weekend trash can service. Um, and that has, ended as of September 1st, um, but we do continue to support power washing of reservation areas um, with that division. And there was a short stint in 2022 where we were supporting Westport trash can service as well. At AWPF, um, we continue um, the maintenance of pathways and surrounding areas, landscaping, and, and helping to, to keep that area clean. For 311 calls, um, we have weekly response and support of calls as assigned um, through Public Works. Our youth development. Um, so there are two major programs um, within City Corps for our youth development. And really that's looking at our City Corps membership. And so high school and junior high youth um, who participate and then also our junior city core. Um, those are fifth grade classes across the city um, that we've really partnered with teachers and the students in their class each school year. And so in looking um, at our youth participation rosters, um, in 2020, when our doors closed to in in-person programming for youth, city core continued to reach out to our junior high and high school members. 
I'm celebrating birthdays with a cupcake drop off, with phone call check ins. And then leaders also continue to reach out to teachers at each of the junior city course sites. In 2021, um, when doors opened briefly, um, our active city core membership um, returned at about 61% of our um, original roster that we had when we closed doors in March of 2020. In 20, and well, it reopened briefly and then shut down again um, as um, COVID-19 positive test had increased. And then in 2022, in January, when we reopened our doors, um, the return number of our members, it had really dropped down to 14%. Um, by the end of 2022, we had come up to about 44%. Um, and so we, we had a large drop off where we had, um, we had most of our students return um, for that brief reopening in 2021. And then in 2022, when we finally reopened and stayed open consistently, um, a smaller number of our students um, came back. And But we've been able to do some recruitment effort and really restore a part of it, not quite at half, um, but we are, we're actively um, working to, to bring in more youth and let them know that we really are open <laughs> and that we are able to um, continue to support that growth. Within our Junior City Corps program, as I shared, our, our partnership is with the three teachers. And so in 2020, when programs closed to in-person, the outreach continued with teachers. And at that time, we had five classes across four schools. And the transition from in-person to virtual was difficult across the country for teachers, as many of us know. And when we felt it locally as well, and even within City Corps. In between 2020 and 2021, two of our junior city core schools, um, Haycox and Ramona, both stepped down. And so in 2022, in reestablishing connections and visits back into um, school sites, um, we continued with three of our, our classes. And so those three classes are between two schools at Haycox and also at Rio Lindo. And then for MAC, our mobile activity center. And so this program takes um, youth center, recreation center activities into parks um, for part of a day. And so we had, can, we had done that programming primarily in the summer. Um, and But when we reopened in 2021, we really pushed um, a new um, time frame for it as well. So not just waiting for summer, but launching it in spring, um, surrounding the spring break time. And so that was in 2021, those numbers are for spring, it was three weeks, and we served approximately 200 youth. Um, and then that summer, the first summer back, um, eight weeks and just over a thousand youth across the various parks um, in the city. And this last year in 2022, um, we continued with the spring model as well. I'm bringing it down to two weeks and we're able to, to serve and engage over 300 youth during those two weeks. And then this last summer, it was nice to see something, um, to see our numbers really come back some, um, more than doubling in participation across the eight week program with over 2,400 students or, or youth um, who are engaged and involved. And so we accomplished a tremendous amount while being understaffed. And so this slide is really looking at um, what our staffing looked like for each of those years. Um, the last slide talked about our youth participation um, a bit, and this is looking at, at our staffing. And so in being understaffed, we had really only 60% of our roster available to support um, for various reasons. And so, um, and with most of 2020, um, it says, 0% extra help because within um, the city of Oxnard, we only brought in um, our permanent staff um, back to work. And so our, for a large part of those projects that we did in 2020 specifically, it, it was the efforts of permanent staff in city core and a large portion of city core staff is actually extra help. 
um, where there are a handful of permanent staff and we had had um, at March of 2020 um, a team of over 50 extra health staff. Um, and in 2021, when we reopened work for um, extra help and, and shifts for, for staff, really only 69% of that staff um, was able to come back or wanted to come back or was willing to, um, really. And then in 2022, in this last year, for our extra help pool specifically, we've lost a number of staff. And so um, with people um, going on to um, new and bigger and better opportunities, um, a number of them with school and um, other full-time employment, we've definitely celebrated a, a lot of um, staff transitions. And then you can also see that we've had some, some staff returning who's been available again. Um, some of them are vacancies that we've we've been able to fill between 2021 and 2022. And so our staffing levels are, are now at a, a stronger place as well. Um, within the permanent staff, within the extra help um, roster, um, continuing to work on recruitment to, to fill, fill those ranks. And so um, that is um, overall the, um, the update that I, I have for you and, and what we had been doing, um, what it looked like in our staffing for um, what City Corps has been involved in and really had the responsibility for. And so us being able to do so much across the division and within our um, townkeeping program in particular um, with so few staff um, for the majority of two years. And then um, really this last year, again, having to um, put a lot of um, a lot of weight on the, the shoulders of our permanent staff with having more of them in place and then um, not having the, the same extra help um, force that we had had previously. And that's definitely been a transition. Um, and so I, I hope that that answers the question of what City Corps has been up to and um, what we um, have been doing, um, not just within our division, but also um, within the City Corps program um, as well. And so um, please um, bring your questions on the 26th and we'll be happy to, to answer them along with my staff. Thank you.